You ready? Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Hello. Welcome back. This is uh, lecture four. Uh, it'd probably be good if I got it on the screen. Uh, so this is lecture four. Uh, we're going to be teaching you guys today how to make a UI table view, which is like pretty essential to like pretty much every single iOS app that you see. Um, and so that's what we'll be doing. Real quick before uh, we uh, get started, just a reminder that like for this assignment, A2, uh, well, first of all, uh, A2 is due tomorrow. Um, and also make sure that instead of submitting your files directly on CMS this time, just follow the instructions in the handout on the website. And you should be submitting something called submission.txt that has like your net ID and then like the GitHub uh, repository link. Uh, if you follow the instructions online, you should be all set, but just make sure you do that. Uh, please don't zip up your files. Uh, it'll be like pretty big, but um, yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll let it slide for this time, but just make sure you guys start switching over to the submission.txt. Okay, yeah, so second thing, mentorship matchings are done. If you filled out the mentorship form, uh, you do have a mentor and uh, they will be released to the mentors uh, shortly. And then the mentors will reach out to you guys through email. Um, usually like, you know, mentors and mentees tend to like, like share contact information, like phone numbers, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, just, just look out for an email from your mentor. Uh, A3 is gonna be released tomorrow. If you need a partner, email me. Uh, I stopped checking the form. So yeah, just shoot me an email. It's a lot easier that way. Uh, and also, yeah, if you already have a partner, you're chilling. Uh, if you've already emailed me and like gotten a response back, then you're also chilling. Awesome. All right, and so real quick, just a recap of last time. So we learned about MVC. MVC stands for Model View Controller. It's kind of like an architecture that we use in uh, iOS development that just makes everything really nice and clean. And so models are basically represent the data. Views are exactly what the user sees. And then the view controllers communicate between the models and the views. Um, and then also, uh, remember we can push and pop and present and dismiss. Uh, we went over pushing and popping uh, last time. Uh, we can push and pop view controllers to basically get between them. And then delegation is used to allow a child uh, view controller to communicate with the parent. And so real quick, I know like we were kind of like this last time on delegation. So I just wanted to like do a really quick recap of delegation. Um, so imagine like we have two view controllers. We have view contro controller one and view controller two. So view controller one has this property called change me one. And uh, view controller two has a property called change me two. And so what we do is, is in one of our functions in our view controller one, uh, we can, I guess, define a new view controller two and then push that view controller onto the screen. And so the really nice thing about this is that we can change change me two in view controller two from view controller one. But how am I supposed to change view controller one, right? How am I supposed to change change me one from view controller two? Because that class doesn't call this class, but this class calls that class. So how are we supposed to do that? Can someone tell me? with delegation, all right? So yeah, so first, the first step in delegation is to define the menu. Remember the menu is the protocol, and the protocol basically says, hey, view controller one, uh, this is what you can accept. You can accept this function called update change me, right? And so the protocol is kind of like an interface in Java, and it basically defines the functions for us, but doesn't implement them. So it says, hey, this function should exist, but we're not implementing it yet. Does anyone know what the next step is? Guesses are good, too. No one? I can wait. So we already defined the menu. So what should we do next? A hint is is the menu's no good if the bartender doesn't know what's going what to do with the menu. What's up? 
for the menu. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like I said, the protocol just defines that the function's there. It doesn't actually say what the function does. So um, the next step would be to extend view controller one. Basically making an extension of view controller one, all this does is it just says, hey, I know that there's a class up there that like has all of this code in it, but I want to also write code for this class here. So what you could do is, is uh, this just says like, hey, this is extra code for view controller one. And so basically, yeah, what's up? Can we put the, instead of using extension, can we just put the function inside the class itself? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can totally do that. We use an extension because it's cleaner, but you can 100%, uh, so remember when we extend view controller one, you also have to like have it implement the change me delegate, right, that we created. Um, and then what will happen is, is after this, it'll start yelling at you, Swift will start yelling at you that you did not implement this function. And you can just, you know, click a button to basically put the stub in there. Uh, so yeah, so you could totally do this by just um, getting rid of this extension altogether, putting the colon change me delegate at the top over there, and then implementing the, uh, the function inside of here. That also completely works. Um, so yeah, so the next step, as you said, was to implement the function. So we implement our function update change me, and we just set self dot change me one equal to change. Remember, self refers to the class, so self dot change me one refers to change me one up there. And then uh, this should be sorry, this should be new value. This should not be changed. Uh, so yeah, we take in the new value, and then we set change me one to the new value. Um, so yeah, then. Does anybody know what we're supposed to do next? So now the bartender knows what's going on. It knows what to do uh, when the customer orders the drink. Uh, what's the next step? Yes, exactly. Yeah, but first, we actually have to give the customer the menu, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new property in View Controller 2. That's the delegate. Um, and that's equal to, that's a change me delegate. And then, here, we are going to set the delegate equal to self. And basically, what that means is, is because we extended this, uh, we implemented this change me delegate, um, this class is a change me delegate now. So we can say, like, okay, the delegate is equal to self. Any questions about that, real quick, before we move on? Does everyone understand what I did there? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's see if I remember how to do that. Uh, there we go. Cool. Any questions? Okay. So yeah. So now that we have guess, I guess, set the delegate equal to self. Um, now what we can do is, is we still don't know like how am I supposed to change uh, C1? And don't don't fear. You basically just call the delegate. And remember, a delegate is a change me delegate. So we know it has this function on it. So you say delegate dot update change me. And then you put in the new value, which is changed. And if I wrote good code here, then this would actually work. But uh, yeah, this should be new value. Any questions about delegation at all? Anything? <coughs> How are we feeling about it now? Like, please be honest too. Are we like, we still here? Like maybe, maybe here? Maybe a little more confused? Where are we at? Okay, I see a couple thumbs up. Man, there are like barely any thumbs. Come on, guys. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. Cool, okay. I see a couple more thumbs than last time, so I think, I think this worked well. All right. Okay. Cool. So yeah, now we're going to get into today. Okay, so today's lecture is on UI table view. Um, so I guess so far we've looked at static data, um, but in popular apps, like the screen isn't fixed, you're able to scroll through things. Um, and so today, something that you can scroll through is called the UI table view. Um, and usually it's a, visible, a visual representation of an array of data. So, um, so this is Spotify on the left, but um, let's like tie this back into something we learned before called MVC, Model View Controller Architectural Pattern. Um, so I guess the model here is um, this one row. Um, and properties of this model are the image, and then the name of the song, and then the artist. So that is essentially our um, cell, which is um, a singular uh, 
entity that contains image, name, and artist. Um, the entire rectangle you see on the screen is our UI table view, um, but one row is called UI table view cell. Um, so far, um, we're going to start with hard coding this array of data, but later on, we'll teach you how to fetch data from the back end and then populate our array. Um, but I guess in here, in this view, um, if you look on the right hand side, we can partition our data into sections within a UI table view. Um, and so within each section, we have again rows that are UI table view cells. So um, here you can index into a row by specifying, oh, I want to look at section zero, but row zero. Well, that's airplane mode. Or I want to look at section one, but uh, uh, row zero of section one, which is notifications. Um, yeah. So we're going to go through how to set up a UI table view um, in this like lecture demo combination. Um, but if you want more detail, you can look at the textbook. Get this pointer down. Um, this is what we're trying to recreate. Um, essentially, we're creating a scrollable table which each cell is a previous or existing iOS team member. Um, and each one, each cell has a bird image and also a label that represents the name. Okay, so in the demo, um, so wait, did you did you clone already? Oh, no, not okay, yet. so we can go through how to clone together. Um, so go to the course website, and then um, yeah, I'm gonna use this one. Copy, and then open a terminal. So CG. Okay, cool. You can and then, hmm? it's fine. Um, so we're going to get clone, and then okay, so it should be created. So CV. Oh, could not. Okay, let me use the other, other version. Sorry. Uh, okay, so if the second command doesn't work, try the first git command for get clone. I should copy the entire command. Get clone. Okay, one second. Okay, cool. So if we do ls, we should have left four. Okay, so now we're in this. Now we can open. Okay, so um, let me just. Can you just like make it bigger? Oh no, doing it. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, you'll see that views folder is red, so um, it's like a technical difficulty with this like directory for this demo. So just go ahead and delete it. We'll just re remake it. So in order to make a new directory, you can right click, and then go to new group. We're gonna call this views. Okay. Cool. So. Um, the first thing we want to do is, I guess, um, is everyone situated or we can have a few more seconds or minutes? Okay, so first one thing we want to look at is if you go to the models directory, is it presenting? The models directory and then look at bird.swift. Um, so this is our model, essentially a single, oh thanks. So a single um, row in our table, UI table view. Um, and that row has properties such as the name and then the image. Um, and then uh, if we go to our view controller, we can look at the hard-coded data I was talking about earlier. So all of this is basically all the rows that we want to populate into our array. This is the like backing array for our UI table view. Um, but what we want to do is uh, create the views itself. Um, and we want to first create a singular row. So we'll call this um, bird like table view cell. So um, go to right click and then uh, new file so new empty file and then we can call this bird table view cell cool and then um make sure that we uh we import ui kit or else nothing's gonna work so import ui kit 
And then now we want to define a class that holds our bird table view cell. So say class bird table view cell, it auto completes and it has type UI table view cell. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is declare the two properties, the two views that sits in one row of our UI table view cell. So mark views. So the first thing we wanted to do is um, de like declare the image, the bird image. So private let bird image view, and that is a UI image view object. The other property I talked about was the label. So let bird name label, and that is a UI label object. Oh, what the heck? What the heck? Save with it. Oh, it's an extension. You can look it up. I don't have that extension, but that's pretty cool. Okay, so, yep. So now we have our two properties um, for a single row. And now I want to write our initializer. So initializer. And if you like search up init, we want to use this third one right here. So it has a style and a reuse identifier parameter. And if you click it, it'll auto complete it. The first thing we need to do is a mandatory call to super.init, and it uses the same style and reuse identifier parameters. So what to fill in? Okay, so fill in style, um, the parameter name is called style, and then the parameter name is called reuse identifier. So now Xcode, in a, in a few seconds, now it's gonna yell at us. Um, it's gonna say, oh, you need to have this um, required um, like initializer that's not declared. So you can click fix and it auto completes for you. Um, the next thing I want to do is uh, set up our individual property views that we talked about earlier. So the first one we're gonna do is set up our um, bird image view. So here's where we're gonna define the private helper function that essentially sets up the bird image view. So mark set up views. So we wanna um, we want to declare a private funct, like set up bird image view. Um, and the first thing I want to do is set the content mode. That basically says that when the screen size like shifts around, how do we want the image to change? And we want it to basically fill. So how you do this is by saying bird image view dot content mode and set it to dot scale aspect fit. And then the next thing we want to do is something Peter um, emphasized a lot last lecture. We want to enable um, auto layout by setting dot translate auto resizing masking whatever to false. <laughs> so <laughs> bird image view translates and then just hit auto complete and then set it to false. This enables auto layout. Um, and the next thing I want to do is, so far we just have a dangling bird image view. We want to basically add it to the parent view. However, this is not a view controller. Notice how earlier I created a new directory that's called views. This is not a view controller. So we don't have a property called view, but instead we have the parent be the content view. So that's what we're going to add this view to. It's called content view dot add sub view, not view dot add sub view. So we'll do content view dot add sub view, and then the sub view itself is what I just talked about, bird image view. Okay, so right now we've added like um, our bird image view to the outer parent view, but we haven't constrained it. So the way that we constrain it is through NS layout. So NS layout constraint, and then we want to call dot activate on it. So dot activate takes in an array of constraints. Um, so you could detect this array and like for good coding convention, this is how we um, lay it out. We're just going to um, list them in order. Um, the first thing I want to constrain is the leading anchor of the bird image view. Um, I want to constrain it to the parent content view. So the way you do that is bird image view <coughs> dot leading anchor dot constraint. 
Um, and in this case, we want to um, constrain it to the uh, content view, but also add like a padding of 16 pixels. So we're not going to do the first one that autocomplete tells you to do. We're going to do the second one. So uh, equal to and then constant. So like I said, we want to do content view dot leading anchor. And then we want to do 16 pixels. So that's what the constant is essentially. Um, put a comma because we need to have an array of constraints. Uh, the next thing we want to constrain is the center Y anchor. We want inside our big like horizontal row, we want our image to be like vertically centered like this. We don't want it to be like towards the top, like sitting on the bottom. We want it to be vertically in the middle. So that's what center Y anchor is going to do. So bird image view dot center Y anchor dot constraint and then we can just constrain it to the outer content view center y anchor so do the first autocomplete option and do content view dot center y anchor okay comma and then lastly we want to fix the width of our image so we'll do that by doing bird image view dot um, with anchor dot constraint and in this case we can just set it to a constant no need to like talk about the parents um, with anchor so we can set it to a constant of 64 pixels all right so now we've fully um, told uh, the view how we want to set up bird image view but we have actually called this helper function so we want to go back to our initializer up here and actually call this function so set up bird image view and then hit autocomplete. Oh, that's not that's not the right one. Set up um, bird image view there. Cool. OK, so we kind of went through how to set up the image view, one of the two properties of our cell. And so now we can kind of go a bit faster when we're setting up the label, which is the name in our row. So um, we'll just define a new function, helper function, called private func set up label. And the first thing you want to do is um, basically tell uh, what the label text color looks like. So the bird um, image, the bird name label dot text color, we can just set to the property dot black. Um, and then we want to uh, set the font of our bird name label. And then we can set it to system font. And it takes in a size and a weight. So we can do size 20 and then dot medium for the weight. OK, so earlier, again, like Peter said, it's important to enable um, auto layout. And we do that by setting translates, auto resizing, blah, blah, blah to false. So bird name label dot translates auto resizing masking constraints to false. And now we need to constrain. Oh wait, we need to we need to add it to our parent view. So content view. Dot add sub view. Bird name label. Now we can constrain it. So ns layout constraint. Dot activate. It takes in an array. Yeah, so the first thing I want to do is um, constrain the leading anchor, um, but we want it to be like relative to the um, like the bird image view. So we want the name label and the um, bird image view to have like a space of eight between them. Um, and basically, we want the um, we want the name label to be to the right of the bird image view. So we can do that by doing bird name label dot um, the leading anchor. The leading anchor of the bird, the label, will be relative to the trailing anchor of the image um, view. So that's why we do leading anchor here, and then we do dot constraint. And here we want to reference, like I said earlier, on the left is the bird image view. So bird image view dot trailing anchor. And then we want to have a padding of eight pixels. So this um, property constant put eight here. 
Um, next, we want to center our um, label vertically, similar to how I explained we're centering the image in our row. So bird name label center y anchor dot constraint. And we want it to be relative to the parent content view dot center y anchor. Yeah. Um, and then now we want to set the trailing anchor of our label in case the text gets too long and we want to constrain it. So now we do bird name label dot trailing anchor dot constraint. And then we want to um, set it relative with some padding to the parent view. So you will choose the first um, option. So here we do content view, get the parents trailing anchor. And then we want to offset it by 16 pixels from the right. So you use negative 16 here. Yeah. So we've basically set up and wrote our entire setup label function, but we want to make sure we call it in the initializer. Um, so setup label. And we call it right here. Yeah. Okay. So so far, we've only um, we've only said how to create an individual cell, but nowhere have we actually defined where the cell lives, which is essentially a giant table with a lot of different cells um, stacked next to each other, right? So we now we need to define that UI table view. Um, this is a UI table view cell, and um, we'll talk about that in a coming demo in a few minutes, um, but. I want to go back to our, where the slides, okay, yeah, so um, quickly I want to talk about, before we do that, oh, I think it will go off the screen, which is something we don't want, which is why we want to constrain it to the parent view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. So it depends. You can you can define different uh, things that happen when that when that happens. So you can have like ellipses show up when uh, like a dot 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 show up if it gets too long. Or you can also do like text wrapping too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's there's a there's a property on UI label that can define that. Oh yeah, and something I want to mention is that NS layout constraints can be kind of tricky sometimes. Um, if you have like conflicting constraints, like constraints that say opposite things, like maybe one thing is saying, oh, move this way, but the other constraint says, oh, you can only be this large, right? If you have conflicting constraints, it might just cause your views to not even show up. So if you're like implementing a project assignment and then none of your views show up, it could just be you are like having a lot of conflicting constraints. So you want to be paying extra um, attention to NS layout out dot constraints and what constraints you're activating. All right, so, um, so dequeuing cells is basically um, important because if you have millions of data, so right now our hard-coded data has like what, 12 um, bird objects, but let's say we had 1 million. In that case, um, if we wanted to have um, all the rows show up on the screen, it would be like a waste of memory. Um, but instead, we just want to allocate memory to the only cells, like maybe the only eight cells that we can see on the screen, which is why we need to dequeue cells. Um, and the solution is dequeuing cells is more memory efficient um, because any cell that's not shown on the screen, its memory is deallocated. And that means that when I'm scrolling and like a cell is out of view, it's dequeued and then a new cell can reuse um, that cell's memory. Um, and uh, this is allowed because, like we saw, we saw earlier in our model, every single bird row has the same two properties, the image and also the name. Um, we use a reuse identifier to uniquely mark every single um, cell that we will later dequeue. Yeah. So um, Peter is now going to talk about how, given that cell that we've like created, how do we put that into a table view that is fully scrollable? Awesome. Yeah, so cool. So yeah, now we're gonna create the table view that um, is gonna house all of our cells. 
So real quick, I'm just going to check out this branch to get the uh, basically all of the code. If you guys want to get the um, code from this point, then also check out this branch. So remember to do so, what I have to do is I have to do git um, stash to get rid of my current changes. And then um, I have to do this command. Let me, this command over here that I copied from the website. And yes, that worked, okay. So now if I go back here, I have some updated stuff. Uh, this is the view controller. And remember, this is our bird table view cell um, that Bell just made. Um, and it has everything in it that we want. And yeah, so yeah, so let's navigate to the uh, view controller dot swift. And what you'll see here is, is you'll see, well, first we have the birds in here. Um, and then we also have this function view did load. This will probably look pretty familiar. Uh, we worked with view controllers last time. And so the first thing that we kind of have to do is you have to define the table view that all of these cells are going to go into. So let's do that first. Let's do a private let um, table view. And that's going to be equal to a UI table view. And again, I'm putting this in properties view. And so then next, what we have to do is, is we have to define a new function that is going to set up our table view. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to call it in here right away um, and then define it. So private func set up table view. OK. So there's a couple different things that we have to do for a table view. So the first thing actually um, uses a little bit of delegation. So the, uh, I guess Apple on the back end has already done like half of the work for delegation for you. Um, but we have to do like kind of the other half of it. So the first thing we have to do is, is we have to set the delegate for the table view. So table view dot delegate, and that's gonna be equal to self. And what you'll notice is it starts to yell at us because the view controller is not conforming to this type UI table view delegate. So what we can do is, is we could do this, but to stay uh, kind of like very organized, we're gonna create an extension of the view controller class. And then we are gonna say that it is a UI table view delegate. And yes, that's what we do. And so then, um, what we have to do is in, in here, there are a, like predefined functions that we can, uh, I guess, put in this extension that change our table view around. So one of these functions that we want to do is called height for row at. If you start typing, you'll see it comes up right here. Um, they all, all of the functions have the same like name, but it's the like properties that are different or the arguments to the function that are different. So that's how we'll find the functions that we need. Um, so yeah, you can, once, once it comes up, you can just click it and it'll come up. And so this function, basically exactly how it sounds, it's, we just want to, uh, return a float that is the height for every single row in the table view. So very simple. We're just going to return 100. I want it to be hundred pixels tall. Okay. Awesome. So that's actually it for the delegate. Um, there's a lot of other things you can do. Like if you want to add like clicking, you can like, if you tap on it, then you can like listen, you can get a function in here that basically gets called when you tap on a cell. Um, there's a lot of other examples, but we'll stop at this for now. Um, the next is you'll see, I have it marked down here. It's this thing called a UI table view data source. Um, so in our setup table view, the next thing that we have to do is we have to set the data source of the table view equal to um, the self as well. So let's do that table view dot data source and that's also equal to self and it's going to yell at us again because we need to conform to now a different one called UI table view data source and we can basically do that by um, writing another extension down here a view controller that is a UI table view data source and let's see table view uh, data source here it is cool and then uh, what will happen is, is it will start to yell at you because um, this has a required function in it. So the delegate actually doesn't require you to implement any functions 
it's nice because you can just kind of like implement what you want. But for the data source, there is one function that we absolutely have to have, which is, or I guess two, which are these two. And so um, the first one is number of rows in section. So uh, remember what Bell was saying before, we can have different sections in our table view, like think about the settings app, right? There's different sections with different rows. Um, and so we are basically defining how many rows we're gonna have in a section. We only want one section. So what I'll do is I'll put all of the cells in that one section. So in order to do that, um, the number of rows in section should be equal to however many birds we have up here. So we can do that by just doing birds dot count. And that is what we want to return. So this is the number of rows in each section. So now we have this um, function cell for row at. This basically says like for each of the rows um, at this thing called an index path, uh, we what is the cell going to be at that row? And so um, basically what we have to do here now is um, because of, I guess, what Bell was talking about before with uh, the with the dequeuing cells, we essentially we need to like find out what cell should be at the row that we're at and then return that cell. So there's a couple of different things that we have to do to do that. So the first thing we have to do is we have to um, we have to guard the um, we have to basically we have to like get the cell from like the D, the DQ, like from like our I guess our like repository of different uh, cells that are going on. Um, so let's do that first. We're going to do guard let cell equals and then we're going to do table view dot. And then you'll see that there's this thing called DQ reusable cell with identifier. And so that's what we want. And the identifier is basically just like a string that says like, hey, all of these cells um, are of the same type and they should be DQ'd and should be memory safe. So that's uh, what that is. And in here, what we're going to do is, is we're going to we're going to put the um, reuse identifier. So Let's look in the table view cell. The f what we need to do is, is we need to define the uh, reuse identifier inside of the table view cell. So that's just a string uh, that we're basically going to use in the other view controller. So we can say, like, uh, let's put it here. Let's do static um, let, and we'll say uh, bird, we'll say reuse. We'll call it reuse. And then that is equal to bird table view cell reuse ID just like that so now we have that static variable that we can now call in here so let's do that let's do bird table view cell dot reuse so basically this says like hey uh, like you know we want to get a cell that is of the bird table view cell and what you'll notice here is it's, uh, okay, we, we need to first, because we're guarding, we need to have the else condition. So if this doesn't work, we're gonna, all we're gonna do is we're gonna return a just normal UI table view cell uh, with nothing special in it. That would not show up as anything. And then um, next, what we have to do is, is we have to, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna uh, come back to this in a sec. We have to do cell.configure and here let me just yeah cell dot configure and this is a method that we're going to set up inside of our cell um which is the bird table view cell remember and then we're going to pass in a bird which is the birds at the index path uh index path dot row so basically the index path has information about the section that we're in and the row uh, we just want to worry about the row because we only have one section. So index path.row is an integer. Um, and basically, we want to get the bird at the row that we're at. Um, and then, yeah, pass it into this configure method that is not set up yet, but we are going to set up in a second. Um, one more thing that we also have to do. Actually, I'll come back to this. Let's go into the bird table view cell real quick. And let's do the uh, configure method. So right under the initializer, I'm just going to put a new... Um, mark saying configure and then let's do this would be a funk 
and configure is what it's called. And it's going to take in a bird, which is of type bird. OK, and now we need to, I guess, like figure out what we want to do uh, when we are like configuring the, the cell. So what we what we want to do is is we want to change the properties of our image and our name label to be the correct uh, image and name. So we can do that very easily by just saying bird image or let's do the label first bird label name label dot text and that's equal to bird dot name and then we can do bird image dot image is equal to a ui image and that is a ui image named bird dot image and so the reason like we do this uh ui image named is because if you look in this um supporting and assets what you'll see is, is you'll see all of the images that we um, want right in here and they're named this stuff so uh, the bird dot image if we look in the view controller bird dot image look is exactly the names that we want for each of the images so that's perfect and so now we have configured the cell so let's go back to the view controller and what you'll notice is, is it's yelling at us now because it says that the UI table view cell has no member configure, right? So the reason for this is because this function DQ reusable cell will actually return you back a table view cell, not our specific uh, bird table view cell. So what we have to do is we have to do a, a cast to the bird table view cell. So the way we do that is we do um at or as sorry and we have to make sure that this is safe by doing a uh by doing a question mark and then we're gonna say our bird table view cell so we're just saying hey this table view cell is a bird table view cell also one more thing that i guess i kind of forgot to put was um as with having the the reuse identifier you also need to have um a something called four and you'll see it comes up and four basically we're just going to pass in our index path here so it's saying like okay we want the table view cell with the reuse identifier bird table view cell um for whatever index path we're at so yeah so now now that we have i guess uh like gotten the cell configured the cell uh now we can just return the cell so just return cell. So this is the function that defines what is going to be uh, seen, what cell is going to be seen on the screen. Uh, cool. Awesome. So there's actually um, one more thing that we need to do, or I guess a couple more things that we need to do before. So um, before we actually go ahead and set up our constraints on the table view, um, we need to do one more thing. We need to, before any of this, we need to register that our table view cell exists. So basically, like registering is just saying, hey, like, hey, Swift, like, hey, uh, UI kit, like this table view exists and this is its reuse identifier. So we can go ahead and do that by doing uh, table view, table view dot register. And then what we get, it, what we have to pass in is the um, bird table view cell dot self. This is the type of the cell that we're going to be using in here. And then the reuse identifier of that cell is bird table view cell dot reuse. Awesome. And then uh, the last thing that we have to do is, uh, well, that's it actually. Yeah. Okay. So now let's set up our uh, constraints. So first we want to add it to the, um, add it to the view. Remember we're in a view controller, so we can use this thing called a view. We can add a sub view and that is the table view. Awesome. And now we can do our crazy uh, translates, auto resizing the asking constraints into false. And then we can set up our constraints with ns layout constraint dot activate. And okay. And basically what we want to do is, is we want to set each of the anchors equal to the views anchors so that the table view takes up the entire screen. So let's do that. Let's do table view dot leading anchor dot constraints equal to 
and then we're gonna do it equal to the views leading anchor. So remember the view is the parent view. So we're just setting, we're just saying, hey, like the table view should equal the, the leading anchor should equal the leading anchor of the parent. Next, we are going to constrain the trailing anchor and we're gonna constrain that equal to the views trailing anchor. And then we are going to constrain the uh, the bottom, the top anchor. We'll do the bottom next, and that's going to be equal to the. Uh, so instead of doing it equal to the view here, we're going to be we're going to make it equal to the views. Um, basically, the views margin. Uh, safe, sorry, safe area layout guide. So remember last time, um, the safe area layout guide is basically what says like. Hey, um, if you have like an iPhone, uh, like 15 or 14, one with like the, what's it called at the top, then uh, what will happen is, is like if you constrain to the view, the top of the view, uh, your thing will go all the way up past this uh, island and it won't be seen. So by constraining to the safe area layout guide that says that, hey, on any iPhone, uh, whatever you're constraining is gonna be in the view if you constrain it to the safe area layout guide. So let's do that, view dot, um, safe area layout guide dot top anchor and then we'll do the same thing for the bottom anchor bottom anchor dot constraint and that's equal to the view dot safe area layout guide dot bottom anchor awesome so we have all of our constraints now oh I completely forgot to put commas because remember this is an array and yeah that should be all good so let's um let's run this and see what it looks like it might take a couple seconds hopefully not oh nice okay all right let's see how long the simulator takes to come up now okay did it work Might take a sec. Cool. So as you see, we have all of our cells, and uh, yeah, we can scroll through, um, and everything works fine, which is awesome. Okay. Very cool. So yeah. So any questions about that, really quick, before we get to the crew? Anything? Okay. Okay, so yeah, so let's do the Kahoot now. I gotta show them the answers. Okay. All right. Ooh. All right, we kind of got sound. It I guess I guess it just went away. Wait, wait, I have an idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm like playing this from YouTube, so I'll we'll have to make use of this. Twenty more seconds. Okay, anyone still trying to get in? Okay, couple more seconds. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay guys, yeah, top, top, uh, top people get prizes, candy. <laughs> okay, everyone in? Yes, yes, okay. All right. First question. People get a screenshot of this one. I like to do that. What should you be submitting to CMS for A2?
Yep, that's right. Yeah, you want to submit the text file with your name, net ID, and the SSH link for your repository. All right, next question. Let's see who's on top. RMY. Who's RMY? You know, winning so far for for candy. How much? How much candy do you have? I don't know. You can like, do like maybe top five. Top top five. Okay, we'll do top five. Okay, how many sections and rows are in this table view? Man, audio is really struggling. <laughs> yep. It was, uh, yeah, one section and nine rows. Yeah, that's kind of tricky. I can see why you think it's two and nine, but uh, it's one and nine. Yeah, it's just one section for all of those. Okay. Let's see. A new person. Who's AR? AR2. Nice. Okay. Which settings menu is at section one, row two? So section one, row two. For anyone who is a little late to answering, it's zero indexed. <laughs> yeah, so it is uh, zero indexed. So like section one would actually be the second section. Yeah. Tricky, tricky. Who's AJ62? Nice. Man, we lost a lot of people on that last one. <laughs> okay, true or false? We should allocate memory for every single cell in a table view. Yeah, it's false, yeah. Remember, that's why we DQ. If you had like a billion cells, uh, we don't wanna be using memory for all of those billion cells because they're not all gonna be seen at once. Uh, so we only need to allocate memory for like the like five cells that will be seen. Okay, still AJ. All right, which of the following are possible reuse identifiers for a bird table view cell? Yep, it was all of the above. So all it is, is it's just a string. So you can literally make it whatever you want. We uh, tend to make it like uh, this, just so that it's like, it's good practice to just have it be the same. But uh, yeah, any of these could work. So let's see, uh, let's see who, who won. Okay, RP665, if you would like candy, you can come up at the end of class. SW. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's bad. Like, I don't want to hit anyone. Oh, that's so bad. I'm not a good throw. You throw. Oh. I'm not throwing. <laughs> okay, nice. Oh. oh. <laughs> Wait, All right, come up. Come up after class. If your name's up here. Do you mind helping me get that? I don't know. It's not showing four and five. So uh, I did not calculate that correctly. Good job, guys. Uh, real quick before you go. Really quick, really quick. Just remember, A2 is due tomorrow night, and A3 is gonna be released tomorrow. Uh, if you need a partner, email me, and if you already have one, you're chilling. Good night, everyone. <laughs>